Hi, welcome back to Unlocking Your Limitless Life, where hidden inside your biggest problems truly are your greatest possibilities. I'm your host, Susan Schatzer, and joining me again today is Kevin Briggs. Kevin is from England, and he's graciously agreed to be on the show and explain and support and share some of his really lifetime experiences ever since he was eight years old. Um, he got a chance to meet Ort and Dee, who are extraterrestrials, in the bathtub when he was eight years old. And now he's here talking about we're going to move forward in your timeline to when you're in in high school or just getting out of high school. You had left home. You were actually on your own. And when you left, we were just talking during break, that they, they actually came with you. Like where you went, they also followed. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's correct, Susan. They followed me where, wherever I went. And I'd been trying to find some friends or family members that were able to travel outside of their body like I'm able to. And I was unable to find anybody at all. And in those days, we didn't have the internet and uh, there wasn't the information available that there is today. Right. Uh, however, I decided I would ask Art uh, for more information. So on this particular evening, uh, I went to bed about 11 o'clock. I'm just relaxing, laid on the bed. I hold my hand out and ask Art if you will give me more information. There must be a lot more uh, to what he's already shown me. Um, and at that moment in time, I fell asleep and uh, Art came. He grabbed hold of my hand. I left my body. Uh, and uh, we both left out through the window. I was a bit concerned because we were three stories up and it was a pavement at the bottom. Anyway, we went round the uh, neighbourhood, the subdivision, came back in through the window, I could see my body fast asleep and I went back into my body. I woke up the following morning thinking, that was cool. <laughs> but I wasn't certain whether I was dreaming or not. So the following night I did the same process. I went to bed, I fell asleep, I held my hand out Art came, he took hold of my hand, we went out through the bedroom window, we went further this time down into the Leeds City Centre, uh, over the university, over the hospital, over the town hall, all the places I recognised, we came back to my apartment, back into the window, I could see myself asleep on the bed and I went back into my body. So that was the second occasion. So the third occasion I thought, I'm going to do this again, three nights running. But I was still concerned about going out of the window because we were three stories up and I still wasn't convinced I wasn't sleepwalking, dreaming or whether it was real. So again I went to bed, I went to sleep, I held my hand out. Art came, he took hold of my hand and he said, are you ready? I said, yes, but uh, do you mind if we go out through the roof this time because I'm still concerned about going out through the window because we're three stories up. He said, yes, no problem. So we went out through the uh, roof this time and we flew further, we went uh, beyond where the earth was so we could see the, the roundness of the earth, the blueness of it and then we came back, back into the roof, into my body, I'm fast asleep and uh, um, Art leaves and then we travelled many times like that over the next few years and he showed me many wondrous things. Um, so yes, quite an experience really. Yes, absolutely, first hand. So if you could pick the one that, the, one of the times when you and Ort were out that resonates with you, that was just, you know, something that you still like talk about to others that you share, it was like the most amazing experience that you had, what would that be? Yes, yes, I have a very special one. Um, and it's special because uh, it involves my family. And on this occasion, uh, Ort came to the bedroom and he said, Kevin, I'm going to take you somewhere special tonight. Are you willing to go? And I said, yes, I'll go anywhere you want to go. So he took over hold of my hand. We went out through the roof and we left and we went straight up. I could see the earth in a small blue ball. And we kept on going and going and rising. And then we took what appeared to be a right hand turn. And then there was a line of people all lining up, about 30 people. In front of the line was my deceased father. And he was stood up. I'd never seen him standing because he was a disabled man. I'd only seen him in a wheelchair. So he greeted me and he said, Kevin, I'm going to introduce you to your family members. And all these 30 family members were eager to see me and speak to me. And the feeling of love was tremendous, absolutely tremendous. So my father introduced me to the different people in the line. And when we got halfway down the line to about the 15th person, the 16th person was a orange orb, four to six inches across, slightly vibrating 
I could still communicate with them. Uh, they told me who they were, when they lived, uh, what part they played in the family. And I went right down the line till the, uh, the end, end of the line. And then uh, I went back with Ort, back to my bedroom, back into my body. And then I used to go and meet these family members uh, on many occasions. And then it was a great to see them. They always wanted me to stay with them though, which I wasn't too keen on. I explained that I had a life to live down here. And once I'd finished that life, then I, would, I know they're there. I would come and meet with them again. that are watching, um, when Ort comes in, his frequency is much higher uh, than ours and our equipment, so there may be scratching sounds or clicks or blips or things like that, and that's just all part of the process, yeah. really. Um, is that right? Yeah, very often when Ort does speak, if we have the electrical equipment on, we get crackling. Not all the time, but uh, most of the time we do get some interference. Yeah, in fact, when you and I were, uh, we were doing a test run on our own video equipment um, just to see how it would look when we were channeling and um, Ort came in and you had a printer right next to you on the desk and the printer just started going off and making all of this ruckus sound so here we are today right and we don't have any printers with us no so hopefully <laughs> we won't get any interference right hopefully so hopefully it'll be a clear connection but if not we just wanted to kind of let you know about that ahead of time so in order uh, for Kevin to allow Ort to come in, we're going to do a meditation that will um, give your body ease with it. Does that sound okay? Yes, yes. I need a meditation that, that helps me raise uh, my vibrational frequency so I can actually allow Ort to come through and speak with me uh, using his consciousness. Are you ready? I'm ready, yes. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to have you go ahead and open the top of your head. Yeah, and pull in your authentic consciousness. It's your original vibrational frequency that you were when the universe was first created, before you chose to be or do anything. And as you breathe out, I'm gonna have you blow it out and blow your breath down to the earth. One more time, in through your crown and down through your feet. and then taking your energy and expanding out. Welcome. Even wider. Even bigger. Flowing the energy through your crown, through your heart, and down through your body. Connecting through to Mother Earth. Pulling the energy up through Mother Earth. Up through your feet. Hello. Hello, Susan. Yes. How are you? Good. Welcome, Ort. We have some bright lights here. We are in a strange surrounding. We are. This is not Kevin's home. This is the studio that we're using today. Okay. Yes. Kevin and you spoke yesterday about being filmed so we could oh, yes. Yes, give he you did. a global presence. He did speak with me. Yes, yes. yes. I, I... Do you have a message that you would like to begin with? Yes, I'm just getting used to the surroundings. This is unusual for me. Yes, um, I can, exp can I explain some things for you? No, I will explain them. I, I, I am getting used to this now. Okay. I am not used to these bright lights and I know. the surroundings. Yes. I know you though. I know. I know you. <laughs> it's yeah. good to see you again. I, I am art. I am an Acturian. I am fifth dimensional being. I have been interacting with Kevin since he was eight years of age. 
Kevin is part of our extended family. Only his physical is here in the third dimension, where my physical resides in the fifth dimension. I am able to communicate with Kevin through dual conscious physical communication. Let me explain to you what that is. Kevin's consciousness moves to one side and he allows me to enter his physical and speak through him. We have been doing this now for a few years and Kevin is quite comfortable with this. I think I am the one that is feeling uncomfortable today, which is most unusual because of these bright lights and these surroundings, but I will get used to it and Kevin is here, so I am, I am good, I am good. You are safe. Yes, I am good. Nice. I understand you may have some questions for me. I do. So these questions um, came with you and with Kevin. Would you be willing to talk a little bit about if Kevin has a specific task here on the planet? Yes, Kevin does have a specific task. As I've already said, I have been communicating with him for over 56 years now. Um, he has been educated by me. I have guided him. I have taught him. I have shown him many things. To get to this point, to get to this position, where I can speak through him now comfortably. Kevin has a task, which is to reveal our presence. He has several things he needs to achieve, which he is working on towards the reveal. We have a timeline for him. He is aware of the timeline. We have introduced him to other species. We have introduced him to a council of eight who he is familiar with now. And they are working with Kevin towards this reveal. So yes, Kevin does have a task. It is an important task. It is a small piece of a large jigsaw. Those are Kevin's words. Yes. I've stolen <laughs> them from him. But I like that. It's a jigsaw I puzzle. like that description that Kevin has given that. Nice. So yes. So yes, he does have a task. Nice. And he's moving towards a nice. goal. So you mentioned, or that you are one of the Council of Eight. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Council? Yes, there are eight of us. There's myself, Dee, Zark, Anna, Ra, he leads the Council. He's Anunnaki. There's Targ, Chika, and Orla. That is the eight of us. We represent five different species in this quadrant of your galaxy. Yes. And what is your mission and purpose, the Council of Eight? Our mission is for the reveal. We are working towards that with many others, as well as Kevin. Right. What will the reveal bring to humanity? The fact that you are not alone. Yes. And many of you already know this. Yes. You are aware. Yes. Your governments do not want to tell you. They are aware. Yes. So really it is time that we reveal ourselves to you. And this is part of Kevin's work and many other people's work who have been working on this for many, many years. Kevin is one of the last pieces in the jigsaw. So that is why we are here. Nice. So when you talk about a, a timeline and a framework, what does that look like for us? We are hoping to do this within the next 20 months. Um, we just need some protocols in place so we will be able to connect with your government representatives. This is being worked upon now by Kevin and by others. So when we achieve this then, it is one small piece that we need to achieve to be able to move forward with the reveal. So it's as though we've reached a balancing point or a tipping point, Kevin mentioned to me, or where it's kind of like you're, we're choosing it and you're part of that next step for us? Is it like our evolution or something else? Can you tell us about that? 
Yes, there are three stages to the reveal. The first stage is raising the vibrational frequency of your species of humans. That has already been achieved. We have reached that tipping point. That has been done by many groups throughout your globe. So we are ready now. We have reached that vibrational frequency. The second stage is understanding that the Council of Eight are here within your solar system. And we are interacting with you. We are interacting with many people. Kevin is just one of many. And then the third final stage would be the physical reveal itself to representatives of your governments. So fairly straightforward really. Uh, it sounds simple, but uh, when dealing with governments, nothing is easy. Yes, and you, you smile and you kind of laugh or yeah. when you say that. Is there anything with our star, the sun, that is impacting the timeline that you have? No, no, I've been asked this before. There, there's no imminent timeline in relation to any dangers to your planet. The biggest danger is of you blowing yourselves up know, with yeah. your nuclear weapons. But we will not allow that this time. You have done that in the past, many years ago. Yes. Uh, we will step in, and that's the only time we will step in. Um, your governments know we are here. They, have, they understand our capabilities, and we wish to work with them. Nice. Which we are doing. Yes, yes, and we appreciate that very much, because we as humans have tried for quite some time without as much success as we would have liked. Is there something we can do as humans to support you in getting the protocol in place? Something we can do to prepare us for your arrival? You are helping by sharing Kevin's message. We have asked Kevin to share his message. Um, the more people understand this, then the people's voice will be heard and your governments will listen. Yes. And we are nearing that point. Yes. Nice. We had uh, recently, there's been some movies that have shown up here on the planet that have really depicted uh, extraterrestrials, uh, aliens, as uh, being very harmful, uh, being very scary, um, wanting to hurt us. How do we know that that's not going to happen? We are not here to harm you. We are here to assist you in your development. Yes. We have been working alongside you for thousands of years. Why would we want to harm you? There are myths and stories of movies yes. for entertainment. Yes. Uh, there are some malevolent, what you call ETs, but they are nominal. Um, they will cause you no harm. No, so you have nothing to fear. Nice. We are here to help. Right. And I'm very comfortable with that. This video that's being created with you right now, or it will be seen by hundreds of millions of people on the platform that we're using. So allowing us to hear you say that you're not here, that we are on track, that we are headed in the right direction, that we do have choice is going to be very helpful. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, you are welcome. I am pleased that you are helping Kevin with his story. Uh, that is very important. Um, so thank you. You, I, I am so in gratitude for you for agreeing to come here and um, to speak with us. Does Kevin get a chance to see you in your physical form? Yes, I have shown Kevin my physical, uh, my wife's the physical as well. Yes, he is used to seeing us. Um, we communicate with him in many ways. Yes. Um, this latest form of communication with the channeling is still a surprise to Kevin. Um, but I enjoy communicating this way and Kevin has now got used to it. So he's comfortable with it, yes. I, I had asked Kevin before you got here for what was one of his favorite memories of being with you that jumped out and he had shared about you taking him through the roof of his house. He was a little bit afraid of going out the window because it was three stories up. Is there a favorite story that you have with Kevin that resonates with you and you're smiling already <laughs> that you could share with everyone? Yes, I have. I remember that story of Kevin when I took him to meet his uh, deceased families. They, yes. they are not deceased, as you know. They right. are now living at a higher vibrational frequency. Yes. They are still alive, yes. just in a different vibrational frequency. Right. 
It is important for Kevin to know that. It is important for you to know that. Many of you do know that, uh, but perhaps you need confirmation of that. My particular story was when uh, Kevin, I went to Kevin one evening and I, he said to me, uh, and I said to him, I said, where would you like to go? And he said, I would like to go to the end of the universe. <laughs> so I said, okay, we'll go to the end of the universe. So I took hold of his hand and uh, we went up through the roof. We saw Earth disappearing. We went out through the solar system and continued on and on and on and on ages. And Kevin was very apprehensive, almost fearful. And um, he kept tight hold of my hand, I remember that. And <laughs> we got to a point and we sat down and we looked around. And Kevin said to me, I'm lost. I hope you know the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have brought some breadcrumbs yes. with me. <laughs> and I said, I know the way back. So we came and we went on the way back. And, uh, and then when Kevin relaxed, then when we got into your solar system, and then we saw your blue, beautiful planet, and then Kevin went his own way and back home, and I went on mine. Um, I quite funny, really, because he has experienced so much with me. Oh, yes. So can you explain a little bit about your relationship to Kevin? Is there a DNA link? Is he a descendant of yours? Or Kevin is, we are multidimensional beings. Uh, Kevin lives here in his physical, in the third dimension. Mm -hmm. I have, as explained, live in the fifth dimension. The only difference is the vibrational frequencies of life that exist in those dimensions. That is the only difference. So Kevin, yes, he is Arcturian, but he's human, he was born here, uh, but he's part of my extended family, as we are multidimensional beings. Nice. Kevin understands this, and uh, he enjoys being part of a larger family. Right. And is it true that we all have extended families? Yes, we do, yeah. yes. You just need to be able to contact, contact them, yes, nice. yes. Hmm. Is this when I ask about my family? Mm. Not being Italian or German, like that's aliens just right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think you are from? Do you have any idea? Uh, Palladian. Palladian, you're really from the Pleiades, okay. Uh, Maybe. Zark, Maybe. Zark is from... I know. The, oh, do you know that? Yeah. Oh, you, have you spoken to the Zark? Yeah. Yes, we he is. We kind of played together. Yes, he <laughs> has. He has a sense of humor. He teases Sunday all the time. Does he? He yeah. does, yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> he likes to take her things. He does. He moves them. He plays hide and seek. He with does. Her. She will put something down and he will take it, yes. <laughs> yes. So, are you confirming that I am Palladian? No. I know. No. Is it something else? No. I have not looked into it. I do not know. Okay. I would have to find out and get back to you. Okay. I was just nice. confirming that Zark was from Zark the was Pleiades. Palladium. Yes. Have you've been to my house um, through Kevin right. when we did the first filming? Okay. So there's something about bathrooms with Kevin and I, and my bathroom. <laughs> yes, we have met Kevin you know, for, for the first time in his bathroom. Yes, and um, bathrooms are quiet places. And they are. Yes. That mine tends to have a lot of activity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> yeah, so that whole thing in my bathroom right. closet. I know Zach does get up to some strange things. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know he does. <laughs> so does it still need to stay in my bathroom? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the stuff with the things in my bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> you better have Zach. Oh, does Lark take care of it? Yes, okay. he will take care of it, yes. <laughs> yes. I will do that. For yes, sure. okay. <laughs> Great. Is there something that our listeners or uh, could take with them from today on something that they could personally implement into their lives or that will create greater ease for them? Only to them? let them know that we are here to help. Um, and if you try to contact us, you ask to speak to us. Uh, if you have a higher vibrational frequency, we will be able to communicate with you. 
So I would suggest those that are interested um, see if they can communicate with any of the Council of Eight. Nice. Thank you. We have pictures of you from Kevin's book that we'll be sharing also. However, we're told you're much more handsome than the picture that Kevin has in his book. Yes. Yes, our picture does not do us justice. No, but it doesn't. No, but uh, that's another story. Right? But I hear in 20 months we're going to get to see you yes. and meet you. Well, hopefully, yes. Hopefully, yes. Is there anything that would prevent that from happening? Yes, there are many things that could prevent that from happening, yes. But we hope to get over those obstacles. And yes, it is not set in stone, unfortunately. But Is there something we could be aware of now that with our group intentions of the multiple hundred millions of subscribers that we have access to? That Just the intention of those people to want the reveal, um, visualize the reveal. Um, that is all, really. I say that is all. That is a huge thing. That is a huge yes, thing. Yes, that is a huge thing. But yes, you know, tell them to imagine the reveal. Tell them to imagine the Council of Eight revealing themselves to your uh, government representatives. Yes, yes, that will be good. That will be good. Nice. Is there any message that you have for me and how I can continue to move this work forward? Just continue what you are doing. Okay. Continue sharing the message. Um, that is all we ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Is Kevin? Yeah. Is he comfortable? Ready? He's, Kevin is he's, he's ready to come back now. He's, yes. He's yes. very warm. I'm he's, very warm. Just okay, here with yeah, you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he does take some energy for Kevin to do this. So. Yes. Uh, but he is more comfortable with it now than yes. than he used to be. But. Yes. Uh, Yes, okay then, well. Thank you. So gra grateful. Right. Thank you. For you for being here. We will speak again, I'm sure. Susan. Yes, we will. We would love to have you back. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ori. Thank you. So Kevin will be allowing Ort to step out of his body and take his consciousness with him. Kevin will be stepping back into his body, uh, bringing his consciousness back with him. And they were sharing thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Is that what you would say? Yes, yes. Kevin, <coughs> thoughts, feelings? Yes. How are you feeling? Uh, okay, I'm warm. back. Uh, yeah, probably I'm warm. I don't know. Yes, I do feel warm, yes. Um, yes, I'm back now. I'm good. I'm good. Yes, sometimes the transition is sometimes quicker than others. No, yes. I'm good. I'm good. So was that a good conversation you had with him? It was wonderful. Okay. It was great okay. to see him again. Right, okay, that's good. Good, good. We talked, he shared um, his most favorite moment with you. Did, what was that? Yeah, and I know sometimes that you don't remember everything. No. Would you like to know? Yes, go on, tell me. We're going to have to wait till the next show. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We've gone like way over, but is it okay if I share it now or should we come back? Share it. We're getting, we're getting, share it now, tell us. Don't okay. make us wait. Go on, go on. So Ort said that it was the time he came to visit you and he said, where would you like to go? And you said, I'd like to go to the end of the universe. Oh, yes, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that, yes. I he do, was yeah. laughing just yes, like that, too. Yes, I remember that, yes, yes, yes. We didn't actually get to the end of the universe. He did explain why we couldn't get to the end of the universe. But <laughs> we went to the end of consciousness itself. So, But, but yes, it was, uh, yes, I remember that. That's a long while ago. Yes. A long while ago, yeah. yes. That was his favorite moment. Oh, okay, that's the good. The one then. that he remembers. Yes. And I had shared with him your favorite moment. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. okay. And yeah. he laughed about that. Did he? Okay. Yeah, he does have a good sense of humor. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Good. That is nice. That was good. I enjoyed yeah. that. Thank you. Very grateful. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you. He spoke about the reveal. Yeah, okay. That's going to be good. Yeah, that's his main topic, his main story. That's what he wants to happen next. Yes. So, yeah. That's good. If what Kevin and I and the Council of Eight have been sharing with you here today resonates with you, if you have questions, if you'd like to have more information, if you would like to have Kevin as a speaker at your event, if you would like to have him as a keynote uh, speaker or in a book signing event, you can find all of his information underneath his TV shows right below this. And as well, uh, would you pop in sometimes and they can write comments in the comment section? Yes, I can do that. Yes. All right. Yeah, no problem. So if you have any questions or comments, we'll invite Kevin to come back in and connect with you on that. So 
Until we meet you in person someday, head on over to Unlocking Your Limitless Life Facebook group, and we look forward to meeting you then. Should we say ciao for now? Yes. Ciao for Thank now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.